Well, welcome back. I'm George. So glad to have you again, as always. And the comments below are great. Uh, you caught me putting together some plugs for uh, our PIDs that we're selling, uh, and it's going well. So I appreciate that. And look, if you want to uh, uh, assemble one of these yourself, um, I'll make sure that I attach a playlist of all of the videos we've done on PIDs at the end of this video. Uh, in the middle somewhere, I'll also add the one uh, for uh, the uh, your heater source selection. So everything and anything you want to know about a heater element or heater source. Uh, so I'm putting these together. Now, uh, if you don't feel if you don't feel comfortable messing with electricity, please just get in touch with us. I'll I'll build one for you. I have no qualms about that. But uh, I'd like for you to build your own. I mean, it's really a, really a simple process. Now, um, simply I'll putting this together. You know, everything by convention is actually color coded. Um, we have a brass side which is always going to be your hot. You'll find that on switches, you'll find it on receptacles, you'll find it on the plugs. Uh, the brass side is the hot side. You'll see the white, the silver side, that's where your white wire goes because it's, it's not a current carrying wire, it's a neutral wire. And of course the green, which is for safety, is always going to be painted green. So all we'll do now is, I'm at this last point, I just, and you'll see that, that, there we go, see how it falls open? right there I'll just slide that wire in there and then tighten that screw up and I'll have another plug prepared for the end of our PID now I do feel there it is see I do feel obligated to share a little bit more with you uh, because here's what I found out and here's what I do know that you may come in contact with and I just don't want you to be you know is look easy enough a caveman could do it Okay, be right with you. All right, before we get started, I just want to show you, of course, you know, Moonshine by Matthew P. Raleigh. I've recommended this book before. It's an excellent read. Uh, it'll answer just about any one of your questions, whether you're a beginner, a novice, or an expert. There's a lot of great information in here. And this is really like a go-to book. Uh, there's plenty of them out there. Rick Morris uh, right, wrote a great book as well, but that one is, uh, I, I kind of like it because that we'll get a hold of one and you know, just go on Amazon and type that in. You'll find it's like $14.95, I guess. All right. Uh, I've got all these plugs and receptacles out here and I need to explain something. So we're going to focus right in on this and not this. For our European friends out there, this explanation is exactly the same. The only difference is, is you're using 220 volts like we use 120 volts. You see, you'll have your 220 volts, your neutral and your ground. And your 440 or 408, whatever it is, uh, is the same as our 240 with two hots, so neutral and the ground. So it's applicable. Good, we're in here now. I, look, I wanted to show you this because these are your selection of receptacles um, and plugs. And, and I've learned something and this is pretty amazing. Basically, a plug and a receptacle is going to be rated on two different principles. One is going to be orientation of the lugs that plug in, and the other is the ability of that receptacle and or plug to handle load. So let's start with this one. This is your standard 125 volt 15 amp household plug or receptacle. And you know, you'll be familiar, you know, it's like a lamp switch and that fits right in there. You know, it's just got a, a hot and a neutral. There, even, there, there isn't even a ground on this one because there just isn't. Um, and then you've got, of course, you got this, here's this three prong plug. And remember, the, these also have, by convention, there's a silver side for the uh, white wire, which is the neutral, and there's a brass side for the black wire, which is the hot wire and then of course you've got the ground plug or ground lug now <laughs> of course this one will fit in there and this one's a rated 125 volt 15 amp and that will fit in there now the difference between a 15 amp receptacle and a 20 amp receptacle believe it or not is more than that is just the orientation of the lug and you'll see this one is sideways 
So this 15 amp plug will fit and work in a 20 amp receptacle, simply. And now the 20 amp plug for the uh, 125 volts will fit in this receptacle because it's matched to it because of the, the way that lug is made. And you'll see that this one goes either up or sideways as opposed to just up and down. Okay, so that's the orientation portion. Although this one will not fit because of the orientation in a 15 amp one, in a 15 amp receptacle. See, they're made like this to, to keep people from getting them confused and mixed up. Uh, you'll normally find something like this on a, uh, like an 18,000 watt uh, or a 14,000 uh, BTU air conditioner or something like that. So they'll normally have a dedicated plug for it. Now, here we have a, this one is really interesting because this is the 250 volt. Uh, this one is the 20 amp. The 20 amp, 250 volt individual isolated receptacle. And here's the plug. And again, it's the orientation of the lug. But notice that it's the opposite lug from the 125 volt, so you can't get them mixed up. Of course, this one will fit in here, and it will not fit in here. Oh, and of course, this one will not fit in here. And that's just to keep us from getting them confused. Make sense so far? That's, it's, it's almost ridiculous. Uh, I just don't want you to get confused and, and, and you, you gotta make sure you get the right plug for the right receptacle. Uh, and in the end, I'll show you something really simple. Uh, now this one is, this is a 15 amp 250 volt plug or receptacle. And you'll notice both of them are sideways instead of up and down. And oh, by the way, yep, the lugs on this are both sideways, so That'll fit in there, but of course it won't fit in here, and it won't fit in here, and it won't fit in here. And of course, none of these will fit in here. And again, that's just to keep us from getting them confused. Now, in almost every case, all of these lugs are of the same uh, density. So will a 15 amp plug hold 30 amps? Or 20 amps, uh, more than likely, yeah. Uh, but the reason it's marked as a 15 amp is because of the orientation, not necessarily the design. Although the receptacle itself, you'll notice that a 20 amp receptacle is a little heavier, a little bit more denser. Uh, it's a little bit more robust than a 15 amp. So if you're wiring and you need 20 amps, 25 amps, you know, you're wiring that 3,500 watt element, um, you can use the 20 amp plug with our receptacle with this plug, uh, or you can move up to the 200, uh, yeah, the 250 volt or this one, okay? That's as simple as that gets. And every one of these have as an example, you'll know this one's the 250 volt because you'll notice it's got two brass wires. And that's because on 240 volts, you have a black wire and a white wire, but or a black wire and a red wire because both of them are load carrying wires. Whereas on these other two here, you have a brass colored and then you have the silver colored because silver is white, brass is black, and the white one is a neutral wire, a non-load carrying wire. And in all cases, they have, of course, the green screw. Now, we can move up, and these are your heavy duty plugs. They push in and twist, and this one's a 15 amp, 125 volt. It's just a different configuration. You'll see it's all about orientation. This one's the 125 volt or 250 volt, 30 amp. And again, it's a little bit more hefty, and it's got four leads on it, or four of these plungers on here, blades. And of course, you have two hots, a neutral, and a ground. Very, very simple. 
And last but not least, you must, I know you've got to be familiar with this, the dryer plug. This one's a 250 volt three wire dryer plug, hot, hot ground. This has no neutral and it only fits this receptacle. So you can't put this on anything but this and you can't put a four wire on this. So if you had a four wire plug on your dryer, and that's more than likely because you've got some stuff in there that's operating off of 120 volts, where in this case, it, it's for a 240 volt uh, system only, uh, you'd have another lug here, another blade. And then that way you'd have a four wire. And we talked about that before on the other video, you have the four wire 240 volt uh, configuration. So you'd have a hot, a hot, a neutral and a ground. I'm hoping this is making sense because this is really, this makes it, this is simplistic. I will almost always use a 20 amp plug and I will almost always use this 15 amp or receptacle and this 15 amp plug. They're both the same, they fit, they're relatively inexpensive and they're universal because I'm not sure if I build a PID that if I use this plug that's got the orientation of that blade off, I'm not sure you've got a receptacle. So I don't want to put you in a position where you've got to change a receptacle when this plug and this plug are exactly the same thing except for the orientation. And this is more universal. So you'll always get them with this on the end of it unless you need something different like that. Okay, now let's slide this aside and we've got three switches. This is a beautiful thing too. And this is just a standard light switch, of course, on and off. Let's turn it this way, on, off. And you'll notice on one side you have two brass lugs or two brass screws. Okay, and you, of course you'll have the, uh, the ground. That's so you can take a black wire, which is a load carrying wire, goes to this screw. And then from the top screw is the other black wire from here to your wire, element, light, radio, whatever it is, because when you switch the power on, it's going to connect these two wires together and provide power. Remember, the white wire will go right next to it, but it doesn't stop. The white wire just keeps going. It goes right to the neutral side of whatever your device is. It's not a load carrying wire. So you always break the load carrying wire it makes it a switch. And as a matter of fact, even your fuse box is the same way. You know those fuses you have in there with the trip switches on them? They operate the same way. All they break is the load carrying wire, which is the black. Now, if we move to, uh, th this one is a 240 volt uh, switch. And you'll notice it's got two brass on the bottom and two black ones on top. So this one and this one's connected, this one and this one is connected when it's on. When it's off, they're separated. What's that mean? Well, you got a black wire here, and if you have a three wire 240, you got a white wire on the other side. Let me get this hold straight. There, they go in the bottom. Then you'll have a white wire and a black wire coming out the top. And of course, your ground on the side here. So that way, when you flip the switch on, you'll have both load carrying wires carrying current. And when you want it off, it'll shut both of them off so you don't have any current running. See how simple that is? And I actually took, let's look at the anatomy of a switch. I took one of these apart. Now this is, and you can identify this, tell me what this is. You see, it's only got a place for two screw. Oh, it's only got a place for two screws on one side. It's got to be, it can only be 120 volt because it doesn't have a place over here for the other lead. So that means the black wire would go here and a black wire would go here. If we open this up, you'll see there's a small contact that you can push and release and it makes contact. When you turn it off, it pushes it down and the contacts open. So there's no power going through from this post to this post. When you turn it on, it releases that pressure and then this post and this post is connected. 
and that's all there is to the switch. Now, if this was a 240 volt, you'd have one here, and of course you'd have one on this side. Separates the two wires. Hmm. That's all I really wanted to share with you today. So you've got some options now. So if you want to build your own PIDs or your pulse width modulators, um, it, uh, and again, I'll have that playlist at the end of the video so you can, you can get every one of those. Um, I think I fulfilled my, my responsibility, I felt, towards you uh, to make sure I explained all this so that you get it right the first time. And of course, you do it safely. Now, we've got all that out of the way. You know what time it is? It's time to get some distilling done. So we've got a lot of mashes we're going to make. We've got some uh, other things that we're going to test and share with you. And we've got some processes, some tips and tricks, some procedures. Uh, it's about time to get back to that and get away from this electric stuff. So what do you say? Happy distilling.